Hello, it's Rachel with Good Behavior Beginnings. And in today's video, I want to share with you our morning routine for our homeschool this year. So we have a third grader and we are homeschooling for the first time. Um, and I wanted to put together a sort of routine that was easy, um, easy to get into in the mornings because our homeschool starts at eight in the morning and we only do mornings four days a week. Um, but exposes um, exposes us to some new information, um, but is really uh, casual and laid back. So that was the idea, something to kind of get woken up, get the brain moving, um, nothing too challenging, but also learning some new things in the process. So here's what I came up with, and here's what we've done for our first week. and. Um, we're gonna continue it for a while with uh, a little bit of adaptations probably. Um, so the first thing we do is uh, start with a, a question of the day. Um, this could be anything, you know, sometimes schools do this where then they ask everybody in the classroom and then they make a graph of it or whatever. Um, I found, and I'm gonna show you flashcards of what I have, but these are just things that I've collected over the years. I have no idea where they came from. Some of them, most of them probably came from secondhand stores. Um, but have these that are called good question conversation cards. I found these um, and they have uh, questions that are just kind of silly imaginary questions. So if you could travel to any planet, which one would it be and why? Uh, what would your dream bedroom look like and what would be in it? If you could meet anyone from history, who would it be and why? Um, and that's what we start with, is we just have a question and we just kind of talk about it. Uh, we get the kids' thoughts and then um, we share our own and then we move on to the next thing. Uh, the next set of stuff is flashcards, which um, I'm not using in like a memorizing what uh, the answer kind of a uh, flashcard format. I'm using flashcards just to expose us to something new, get a few interesting facts, and then if we find something that's interesting, maybe we'll pursue it in more detail later. So the flashcards that I have, um, we're doing one that's a quote. So this is <laughs> the the box isn't even staying together. This is the book of or the deck of cards. Who said a knowledge cards deck of memorable quotes? It's so old, like the whole thing is falling apart. Um, but it'll have a quote here, and then on the back side, it'll tell you who said it and information about the context of the quote. Um, and the person. So um, not every quote necessarily is something that a third grader would encounter, but you know, just kind of, again, sort of an exposure to uh, different ideas, different language, different thoughts. Um, and, and again, if there's things that are interesting, then we can pursue those in a different way. Um, this is also how we're introducing like a little bit of the geography. So found these cards. Um, we are located in the United States, so we're gonna do states. Um, each card has the state and information about the state, like the nickname, the population, and the area. And then on the flip side, it has um, a map that sort of shows where it is, what's next to it, and the capital. So these are ones that we started um, using and introducing, and we'll continue through those. That'll get us through at least 50 days. Um, and then, I don't know, maybe we'll do countries or flags or something similar along those lines. Um, I also have a deck, so I know this one came from a, a secondhand shop, on constellations. Um, and so it's got a picture of a constellation. And then on the back, it's got information about it. Some of it's like super detailed information about, you know, the approximate position, which I don't even know what the words mean after this because it's not even something that's in my, um, in my repertoire. But it also has, 
Let me see if you can be able to focus. Um, you can't really tell on this one, but it also has the outline of like, oh, if this is an arrow, well, here's what it would look like. There's, there's a shadow, so you can kind of see, oh, this was the bear, and here's how the bear would look, because most of the time we look at these constellations and don't necessarily know why somebody thought it looked like what they said it looked like. Um, it also gives a description of sort of the myth behind the constellation and some special features about the, um, the stars actually involved in the constellation. Um, let's see, we were doing um, an art flashcards. I thought I had flashcards that covered a lot of different art. It turns out it was just impressionist art. So we just did the cards that kind of talked about impressionist paintings and then we switched it up and we're doing animals now. And I'm pretty sure these came from like the dollar bins at Target. So it's got an animal on one side and then it's got a bunch of facts about like their scientific name and um, size and diet and then some some facts about them. The other flashcards that I'm uh, that we're using are from urbanintellectuals.com and they are black these are the black history matching pairs. There's a digital download for the volume one black history flashcards. Um, and then we got volumes two, three, and four, two, I believe. Um, so uh, the flashcards, so the flashcards are all online. They could be printed. Maybe there's a, a, a printed version that I just couldn't find. But we bought the matching cards so that we would have the, the cards themselves. Um, but they don't actually have anything on the back. So I have the digital download where I read then the information on the back. So this is um, Black History, and it has like four or five different um, points about that particular person or event from Black History, and then, um, you know, and, and, and information about the context and why it's important. So that's our flashcard routine. We do a, a question of the day, and then we do one, two, three, four, five flashcards. I mean, we spend maybe a minute on each of these, maybe two minutes, sort of like if there are questions or to provide some context. Um, and then the other three things that are part of our morning routine are cursive editing and uh, hidden pictures. So for cursive, I downloaded from K5 Learning um, a bunch of cursive handwriting sheets. Now, at the end of second grade, so um, after spring break, like my kid never went back to school after spring break. So after spring break, when we were then um, crisis schooling at home and, and making things up, I had a workbook that taught cursive handwriting. Um, they had started, and I think they had done like two or three capital letters at um, school. So we we did capital letters, we did lowercase letters, and we made it all the way through um, the workbook um, by the time that we got to summer. So uh, the kids been exposed to all of the letters, and so this is not letter by letter. These are um, joining letters, so like two or three letters in a row. And then um, past that, I know that there are some that are words and then sentences. So that's kind of what we're going to do is we're going to practice the cursive. Now, I will say that handwriting is always one of those things that for me, give or take, right? Um, I don't write in cursive. I can sign my name and I can read cursive, but I don't write in cursive. I remember being taught cursive in second grade and third grade, and then they made us write everything in cursive in fourth grade and fifth grade. And then we got to sixth grade, and of course the question is, do we need to write it in cursive? Um, like, will this be on the exam um, that, that college and high school students ask? But like, do we have to write it in cursive? And the teacher was like, I don't care how you write it so long as I can read it. So me, who never really felt super comfortable with cursive, uh, went back to print, and my handwriting's not like amazing. And 
I don't really care because people can read it and most of the time I'm typing. So I think that we need to, to use cursive and teach cursive um, so that the kid can read cursive, especially because grandparents send things and all, almost all of the grandparents write in cursive, right? So um, I, want, I want the kid to be able to read cursive. Um, I don't really care if they choose to write cursive. Um, maybe the school will care, maybe not. I don't know. So we're gonna practice it. I think it's decent to um, practice. It's a nice fine motor activity. Um, the pages are very short, um, so it, it doesn't take very long. Again, maybe a couple of minutes. Um, the editing. So this was something that um, we, uh, the kid had never seen before. So I do want to, I did want to introduce that. And part of it is like the attending skills. So editing, sure, there's like the proofreading with all the official, um, you know, marks and, and that sort of a thing. Um, but, you know, just being able to go back and, and check your own work. Uh, sometimes the kid rushes through things. Sometimes they don't pay attention. And the things that they miss are not things that they don't know. They just did it too fast and they left off a period or, or didn't capitalize something. So I found worksheets, uh, superteacherworksheets.com um, that have editing on them. And I'm sure there are other places that have all these worksheets. These are just things that I was able to find. Um, and it has a little paragraph. It has the proofreading key, which I did explain to the kid, but I don't really care if they use that or not. Um, but the idea is you read the paragraph and you find the mistakes. Um, kids really good at finding spelling mistakes, which is great because then that gets us a chance to practice spelling and, and you know, uh, new words if we need to. Um, punctuation, learning about punctuation and quotation marks. Apparently, apparently they had never seen quotation marks before, so um, we're going to cover that and, and why, when you use quotation marks and what that looks like. You know, so that takes another minute. And then we just go through, there's a key that I have printed out in the back of the little binder there too. And, and I just check to make sure that we found all the mistakes. Um, and then the last thing we do, that's part of our morning work. Um, this one is from Highlights Hidden Pictures. Um, we have other ones, they come in magazines sometimes. There are other ones. This is just the first one I pulled out. We have so many of these. Um, the kid really loves these hidden pictures, and so I wanted to have something that was kind of fun. Um, some of them are black and white, um, some of them are color, and some of them have stickers to put on um, when you find the item. Uh, again, just sort of an attending activity, something fun. It looks like fun. It, it, it is fun. <laughs> the kid really enjoys them. Um, but it's also working on like those attending skills, so scanning and, and paying attention and noticing fine details. Um, I, uh, I, I would love to see, you know, um, paying attention to increase, right? Not just like in structured like school things, but just in general, noticing things and um, and attending to your environment around you. So, so basically, that's our morning routine. It um, I don't know how long this video is at this point, but um, it probably takes twenty minutes, maybe, um, with checking and with conversations about the flashcards. And, and that can be flexible. You know, we could stretch it out a little bit if we have a really interesting card that we want to learn a little bit more about, or I can flag it and, and it can be something that we look up later in, in science, right? If it's, oh, it's a certain constellation or it's a certain an, animal, we can, you know, spend more time on it later. Um, and then the, the, the cursive and the editing and the hidden pictures are really, again, just sort of like quick, simple activities to attend to practice some fine motor skills and to just sort of like get us in gear for a slightly more structured learning. So after we complete that morning routine, um, then I give the kid a choice. Okay, what do you want to do next? And we pick from the board and they 
you know, they mark off the ones that we've done, which again can be very satisfying because it took like 20 minutes and we get like half those things on the list to get to mark off. Um, and, uh, and then they get to choose the next activity and we start our day. So, so that's our morning routine. Um, I will let you know if that shifts, if we change things up. Um, like I said, we already shifted from like art flashcards to animal flashcards. Um, the geography, it's 50 states. Well, 50 days in, we're going to be out of states. So we'll switch it up to something else. Not all of these quotes will probably, we'll probably skip some of the quotes in the deck. So, you know, just a uh, little tidbits of information um, to kind of uh, get awake and get moving. So um, if you have any ideas or suggestions um, or, you know, you want to share what your morning routines or, or if you're not even doing it in the mornings, whatever you're like get, getting ready to learn kind of routines are, I'd love to hear them. And um, thanks for watching.